Once again, good evening. My name is Togo Didiza, the CEO of the Tab acting CEO of the Tabombegi Foundation and the project consultant at the Achima Fejo Research Institute. I will be your program director for this evening. I would like to welcome you all, in particular our students who are graduating this evening. I would like to acknowledge our Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of South Africa, Professor Manda Makanya, our Pro Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Bajnath, our Patron of the Tabo Mbegi Foundation, President Mbegi and Mrs. Mbegi. I also want to recognize all our Vice Principals who are here Vice Principal Research and Innovation, I got her new name. Uh, Vice Principal Sitati Pakeng, do you want me to share your new name with them? <laughs> Vice Principal Research and Innovation, Mamkheti Sitati Pakeng. Other people at the university were not aware, or rather they were not able to call Sitati, so they say, she advised them that if you say state, it's just close to it, you can understand. And parking, they were saying parking. So she said, no. You know, when you say parking, you can understand it better, at least come closer. So her new nickname is Professor State Parking. Would like to acknowledge uh, Vice uh, Principal Institutional Development, Professor uh, Dr. Kobela, our Vice Principal Academic Planning, Professor Mare, our Registrar of the University, uh, Prof. Masmoche. We also have got uh, Vice Principal Operations, uh, Bani Erasmus. We have got our Executive Dean of Economic Management Sciences. We also have got the head of the UNISA Foundation. I need to acknowledge him because without him, we might not get some few dollars of fundraising for Timali. So he's a very important guest here for us and our partner. We'd also like to acknowledge our statistics general among us here. But without the Tabombegi, uh, Foundation Board of Trustee members, we wouldn't also have this partnership with UNISA. I'd like to recognize all our trustees who are present here, Mrs. Mbegi, uh, Advocate Mojanku Gumbi, uh, Aziz Pahad, uh, my former college. We also have here the teachers, or rather lecturers, at Timali, who are also here, the students have had an engagement with them today, and also the visiting scholars who time and again uh, would visit Timali to share their experiences and teach. We want to acknowledge again all our members of staff at the University of South Africa, but also our parents, who are here with the students and family members and our graduates tonight. All of you are welcome. But to give an official welcome on behalf of the university, I've left my important guest deliberately. I'm sure some of you are saying you mentioned her, but why are you not mentioning her now? There is a reason for that because Abakulu, the elders, will have to do that at an appropriate time. I would like to welcome Vice Principal, Vice Chancellor and Principal, Professor Manda Makanya, to welcome all your guests tonight. Uh, Program Director, Mrs. Togo Tidiza, thank you for this opportunity. Honorable Patron of the Tabombegi African Leadership Institute and the Tabombegi Foundation and former president of 
our republic, Mr. Tabo Mbegi and Mrs. Zanelle Mbegi, former Deputy President, Mrs. Pumzile Mlambonduga, members of the Tabo Mbegi Foundation who are here present, members of staff of Timali, Professor Rita Mare, Vice Principal Academic Teaching and Learning, and other members of UNISA Executive and Extended Management, Professor Naren Bejnath, the Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Vusi Kumete, Head of the Tabumbegi African Leadership Institute, Timali graduates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Africa is acknowledged as a key global growth point, a continent of unlimited potential. Growing numbers of influential voices, political, social, and economic, are highlighting the growth taking place on the continent and the opportunities that this presents for Africa as a continent, as an influential global player. Our continent is often referred to as a sleeping lion that is awakening, that is stretching, and that is flexing its muscles, heralding its power and influence in world affairs. Yet, while one sees evidence of an imagined new order, of clear shifts in the balance of power globally, and of a fundamental reorganization and reorientation of economies and societies along new lines, Africa currently seems to be more of an observer than a dictator of the pace and the arbiter of its own destiny. There has, of course, been evidence of progress, of the assertion of the African voice in, in its own and world affairs. But this has not always achieved the kind of success that it deserves. One thinks, for example, of the African Union and the true extent of its power and influence in world affairs, let alone African affairs. One sometimes gets the impression that the greatest stumbling block to our potential is Africans themselves. In fact, at times one could be forgiven for thinking that Afro-pessimism is more prevalent among Africans and among, than among its foreigners, begging the questions, do we in fact believe in ourselves and our ability to unleash Africa's potential on the world? Why do we find it so difficult to act on the potential that others see and in which they are investing to an increasing degree? Why do we seem to be so complacent about allowing others to once again influence and shape our economies and our power relations, continentally and globally. Much of this inability to maximize our huge potential as Africans can be ascribed to a death in the right caliber of leadership on our continent. Honorable men and women of vision and integrity, whose commitment to their people and their countries outweighs any and all other considerations. It is strong ethical leadership, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, that will drive us forward and upward, and that will see this continent potential blossoming. Generally speaking, we do not have a proud track record in that regard, and it should be a matter of concern to all of us that as a people who claim to be shaped and formed by Ubuntu Butu, there seems to be scant evidence of it in far many two places and cases on our continent. If Africa's rising is to succeed, we will need the right caliber of leaders at the helm. Africa needs visionary and dynamic leadership that will put paid to the pessimism and dejection and lead this continent conf confidently into the future that is designed and dictated by ourselves and that gains global recognition as peers to be treated with appropriate levels of respect and gravitas. Africa needs leaders whose integrity and skills 
will contribute to the unlocking and unleashing of the huge potential that resides in our continent. That is why I'm so delighted to welcome you to the certificate ceremony of the Thabo Mbeki African Leadership Institute at the University of South Africa. The Institute is firmly a part of UNISA and will ensure not only its longevity, but also the expansion of quality academic offerings in line with its developmental trajectory. We are excited and encouraged not only by the status and success of the Timali programs, but also by the continental interest that this institute is and continues to generate. There is no doubt that Timali is well on its way to become the premier leadership institute on the continent, and we are exceedingly proud about that. In this cohort of young men and women reside future leaders, reside governors, and reside administrators of the highest order, Africans who will do us proud at home and abroad. This is a very privileged group. Few are as fortunate as to have been schooled leaders themselves, as well as by the academics and other persons of the highest intellect, caliber, and experience. To our graduates, the recipients of certificates, congratulations. We will be watching your progress with interest, with excitement, and with a lot of anticipation. And we look forward to sharing in the success that many of you will undoubtedly achieve as you grow and develop in your careers. Bear in mind, we will all be the beneficiaries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Amanda Makanya. I'm sure the students who are here, even though they are graduating today, have already heard what we expect of them. We'll now come to an important aspect where the class of 2012, second semester, and the class of 2013, first semester, will share with us the journey they've traversed. This is a journey, I'm sure, which has been very exciting, but also challenging. All of them, when they start, their first excitement is to meet the patron. They ask all the questions that they've always wanted to ask, but they could not reach him while he was in office. So this becomes a very exciting opportunity that for once we got him. And it's always a very difficult phase to say, please, next time, because they want to get the best out of him at that moment. Quite exciting. First orientation with the teachers when they outline their programs, it all looks quite easy. Why do you really need six months to do this thing? But the first class after the first day, and when they are given those materials to read, and the first assignment, and the group assignment, some of them start phoning and say, Sir, can I please register next year? Because I don't think I can make it this year. Some of them start saying, why wasn't this made a degree course rate? Why should it be a certificate? It's too intense. And the teachers who were laughing with you the first day, they are so serious, they are not laughing. They want their assignment on time. So we want to hear from you, how has this journey been? But I think what for me has been important and for you is the knowledge and the tools that we have acquired. Theoretically, you may feel very excited and think next day you are going to move the platform. I think the challenge will be on the application. First in your workplaces and when you have to engage with some of your peers continuously on the challenges that confront our continent, I sometimes read your Facebooks and say, wow, why didn't you have this Timali long ago? Because for the first time after this course, you don't just accept anything that you read from paper. You ask, you think, 
you analyze, you sometimes critique. Isn't that nice? That's nice. Can we now have the two students, Dr. Sachuayo, for the class of 2012, you'll start. Come on the podium. We won't hear you from the back. Followed by Miss Ngenkana. Good evening. I'm, I'm actually speaking on behalf of class of 2013. Uh, but now that I'm here, I may as well shoot. Nobody won't be heard. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Cody Deezer. She's my former minister. The patron and former president of the Republic of South Africa and uh, Mrs. Mbeki. The executive director designate of the United Nations uh, Women Organization and our former deputy president. The vice chancellor and principal of uh, University of South Africa. The head of Timali. Program Director and Acting CEO of the Tabombeki Foundation, the trustees of the foundation amongst us here tonight, UNISA leadership, invited guests, Timali and UNISA staff, fellow students and alumni of the uh, Tabombeki uh, African Leadership Institute. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening once again. It is indeed a privilege to stand in front of you this evening to speak on behalf of the class of 2013, during the year when Africa has made a lot of strides. And we have heard from what uh, Professor Makanya had said earlier on. The year in which we are celebrating 50 years of the founding of the Organization of African Unity. And the year when the University of South Africa is celebrating 140 years of shaping futures. We all know that a strong feature of African culture is respect for and learning from our elders and ancestors. We can indeed learn a great deal from history and from the achievements of the past African generations. As the Swahili saying puts it, if you refuse the elders advice, you will walk the whole day. And by the way, honoring and learning from ancestors and elders it's something that we have been doing a lot uh, during our times here at Timali. We have learned how Kwame Nkrumah, his Pan-African idea of continental unity in the immediate post-independence era, set the tone for a collective effort towards achieving development in the continent. Together with the founding fathers of the OAU, who are the architects of what the patron call Project African Unity. Patriots like Emperor Haile Selassie I, Seko Ture, Modibo Keita, and the famous Babawa Taifa, Julius Nyerere, and others, have carved our paths and set us on course for rebirth of our continent. We have learned during our times at Timali about Africa's economic blueprints from the times of the Lagos Plan of Action and how the Western nations and their agencies conspired to stall its implementation through introduction of many instruments, including your structural adjustment programs. We also learned about alternatives that were introduced, like the Africa's Priority Program for Economic Recovery, as well as the African Charter for popular participation and development. All this which remained merely statements of intent. We also have learned how in the past 10 years or so, the two parallel processes at economic and political level have tried to galvanize our edge to reclaim development of Africa. Firstly, the establishment of the African Union to continue and refocus the work of the OAU. And secondly, the evolution of new partnership for Africa's development, NIPAT. Thanks to the former president of Senegal, 
Abdullahi Wadi's Omega Plan, and former president of South Africa's His Excellency Tabon Beki's Millennium Partnership for Africa's Economic Recovery. They articulated the praxis of African-owned and African-led development, continuing the journey towards Pan-Africanism, pronouncing a call for us as Africans to unite in order to achieve African renaissance. As recent as 2009, Zeleza said, African renaissance is a call for change. It is an African revolution, a, re a reawakening, reconstruction, rebirth, regeneration, renewal, resurrection, and revival. It is an idea, a dialogue, a project, and a process that requires Africans and Africa to reclaim its history and its humanity, so cruelly seized by Europe through slavery, colonialism, and neocolonialism. It is obvious that in taking a leap into the next phase of African Renaissance, new approaches and different kind and cadre of leaders are needed. And fortunately, this new approach has emerged and a new breed of thought leaders is being prepared to take the work forward as we venture into another 50 years towards 2063. During the orientation session earlier this year, in his welcoming remarks, the patron said Africans will be spending a lot of 2013 celebrating the Golden Jubilee of the OAU, discussing challenges facing the continent and trying to come up with solutions. He said one such challenge, that, uh, and he emphasized, which is also very fundamental, is leadership. Leadership as a challenge in Africa is not only in politics, but also in business, in society, and in other spheres of our life. Timali, in partnership with UNISA, has taken up the challenge of providing that leadership in academia to ensure that enough thought leaders are developed to carry the baton. To most of us, this has been a true moment of rebirth an academic renaissance, a moment we'll forever cherish. It was and is still a privilege for us to study and associate with Timali. The Vice Chancellor, Prof. Makanya, during the same orientation session, said that this year uh, we are at the right place and at the right time. And that once we complete our program, we will want more. And true to his words, we surely want more, and we will indeed be with Timali and UNISA for a, for a long time. What is encouraging is that Timali is growing, as you have heard from the Vice Chancellor, which is evident in the increase in staff numbers, academic offerings of quality, and most importantly, students, both current and prospective. Timali is indeed investing in the thought leaders of Africa's renewal. For us, it will remain our center of excellence, a fountain of knowledge and a platform of dialogue for us to sharpen our instruments as we take up the challenge of contributing to the rebirth of Africa, to make this century a truly African one. At the launch of the Tawumbeki Foundation some years back, Former Ghanaian president, who was the guest speaker, indicated that the work that President Mbeki had started with the foundation and that of former President Obasanjo in Nigeria and former President Chisano in Mozambique and many others, including himself in Ghana, is ample evidence that African relations is here to stay. He highlighted that as the breed of African progressive leaders even if they do not achieve all the potentials of African Renaissance in their lifetime, the torch being lit will keep shining on. Recently, President Paul Kagame of Rwanda highlighted one fundamental problem that we are facing as Africans, that Africa's stories are written somewhere else and not by Africans. And this is the reason why the rest of the world looks at Africa and want to define it and to shape the perception about her. The best thing we can do for ourselves is to own our problems, 
own our solutions and write our stories. Thanks to Timali that now we are equipped to understand and own our problems, craft relevant solutions and write our own stories. There are more Africans waiting for this opportunity and we hope Timali is here to help them contribute to this journey. In closing, it will be irresponsible for me if I don't recognize that the month of August remind us of the most important people in our lives, women. Let me take this opportunity to honor the women of Africa and also congratulate Mepum Zilem Lambangunga for her recent appointment as the Executive Director of the United Nations Entity for Gender Equality and Empowerment for Women. This is recognition that Africa deserves, a fit befitting for African women, for the role that they have played in emancipating Africa from the colonial rule, their increasing role in regional and global politics and business, and the day-to-day -day role they play in society. We would also like to wish Tata Madiba well in his recovery process. On behalf of the Timali class of 2013, I would like to thank the patron, the foundation, the leadership of Timali and UNISA, the lecturers and staff alike, for the support and great moments we've had during the past academic year. I thank you. It's always a challenge to talk after the people whom you actually represent because you will talk pretty much the same thing. But I promise you a good song is worth repeating. <laughs> um, the Vice Chancellor of the University of South Africa and the director of the, of, of the, the head of the, of the Tabombegi Leadership Institute, the patron of the Tabombegi Africa Thought Leadership Institute, and his wife, distinguished Tabombegi African Thought Leadership graduates, visiting professors, academics, and guests. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It gives me a great pleasure to stand before all of you this evening in a woman's month as a woman to take briefly you a journey that has brought us here tonight. An experience from the second group intake of the Tabombeg African Leadership Institute that will also be receiving their certificates tonight. I would like to thank most sincerely um, for being provided the opportunity to speak here. It is truly an hum a humbling opportunity. Significant, significantly to this Women's Month, without breaking any protocol, please allow me also to congratulate Mama Pumzile um, for her outstanding work that she continues to do ultimately towards the realization of the renaissance of Africa as a result of that beautiful work and has been granted an opportunity to represent women and Africa in the United Nations. <laughs> this evening is not a usual academic certificate ceremony. I suppose because we as Timalites are not usual graduates, we believe. We take this ceremony as a gesture of acknowledgement in a form of a certificate, a six-month program that has meant what education should mean, a total transformation of mindset to critically question and understand the world's outlook and thereby provide possible solutions, particularly for Africa's development. I am certain all graduates present tonight would agree with me when I say we would not have graduated at any better year in Africa as African thought leaders that are rare than the year of the 50th celebration of the African Union. <clears throat> A significant milestone for the continent towards the realization of its renaissance. And what we are here tonight to congratulate that more than anything else, their sole intention as graduates enrolling in the Institute is exactly in response to the question that we forever ask as people of Africa from different formations and organizations in our communities and government generally, that in the context of the development discourse taking place today, what is out there for one to learn? 
what is expected and required from us as general African citizens without having acquired a leadership position so that we contribute to the development discourse of Africa. And perhaps what is also known to be the patron's favorite, um, favorite note, especially when speaking to young leaders like ourselves and graduates, that what is the caliber of the cater that is required to bring about the realization of the renaissance that the African continent needs. The 50th celebration of the OAU, an organization that has given birth ultimately to what we are gathered here for tonight. This year has been declared a year of Africans towards reviving Pan-Africanism and African renaissance in the continent. I am certain that those who have come to know the Institute must know that its ultimate vision and mission speaks to the significant milestone of the celebration of the OAU. The graduates who will, who will see to it and also believe that the realization of the Africa's vision, the vision 2063 and beyond will only come to pass when the citizens of this beautiful continent have in its entirely been timalized. To be timalized, ladies and gentlemen, I and surely my fellow thought leaders would agree that it is to provide with clarity a critical analysis of, on a detailed essay that responds to issues and questions that sought to define what is to be done by Africa to bring about the renaissance that we want to see. And of course, that would be in a distinction. And I can assure you if it's not, well, then we would write another critical essay that requests and supports that the essay should be in distinction. <laughs> this sought to give us a glimpse of the picture of critical analysis that the Institute produces and young African leaders that are beginning to believe and find confidence in their own ideas without necessarily checked domin check by dominant knowledge that continues to belittle Africa and African knowledge and its ideas about how better can Africa be developed. If there is ever anything we have learned from Timali, ladies and gentlemen, is that, the um, is that the ultimate people who will be bringing Africa to its dreams is in fact its citizens. I say this, ladies and gentlemen, because we have more than anything else learned that leadership is not a position, 